Hello, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. I'm Levi. And I haven't had Levi on camera very much in the last few videos. So if you are new to the channel, this is my husband. We have been married 14 years and homesteading for almost five of that. Believe it or That's not. That's crazy. Yeah. So we've got a list of questions that I actually asked for about a month ago. So I'm sorry that it's taking me so long to get to these questions right now. We had a friend come in from out of state and then we both got sick and then kidding season was happening. So it's been kind of busy, but you guys actually have a lot of questions and Levi noticed earlier that basically they're all livestock related. So I will not have much input tonight. You'll, you'll have some, <laughs> there's some here. I didn't say none. It's actually not super surprising to me. We kind of have two growing seasons here throughout the year. We have our spring and summer, which is very much garden centric. And then we have fall and winter, which we focus on our proteins at that time. And so we've been in the protein season for the last couple of months or at least. And so a lot of this is related to that, but very excited. Let's get right into it. I would be interested in what products you use to treat your goats. I've been having a hard time with trying to stay as natural as possible since we are drinking the milk, but still keep everyone healthy. That's one of the really hard things with goats. There is a reason why you cannot find organic goat's milk products anywhere at the store. Um, I'm sh I know that there are organic goat farms and they keep very healthy lines of goats that for generations have been managed in an organic way. And that kind of thing is possible. It's just going to take time. Usually you're not going to buy a herd of goats or a few goats from just anywhere and be able to treat them holistically straight out of the get. You can get away with that a little bit more if you buy from somebody who's managed them a little bit less hands-on, kind of like a homesteader would. But usually when you buy animals, from like show herds or intensively managed herds, you can't just throw them straight into more natural types of care because they, they just won't respond well to it. We don't necessarily manage our herd super holistically. One of the reasons is a lot of those treatments, like for worms, for example, it takes multiple doses of like an herb in order to get a handle on the worm load. And I simply don't have the time and attention to give towards those natural remedies. So we do treat with dewormers like ivermectin. I do use Panacur, I use Valbazin. I do use chemical warmers just to say that, but I have recently started integrating in a thing called BioWorma and that's a feed additive that is pretty natural. I don't know if it technically classifies as organic, but I used it all last year and I've been using it again this year. It's a fungus essentially that you put in their feed and it doesn't affect the goat at all. It comes out the other end and that fungus actually consumes the larval form of the worms that are on board inside the goat. So it breaks that pest life cycle and that's a really great kind of introduction into natural care for your goats that I would recommend to everybody. Also, there is a coccidia treatment that I haven't gotten to use yet. It's, I think Hoger puts it out. I'll put an image of it right here. That seems really promising. So just like with chemical dewormers, you can get a resistance to chemical anti-coccidial medication. And so you've got to really be careful with just giving those willy nilly. And so this herbal concoction is very intriguing to me. But again, I haven't had a chance to use it. What are you planning on making with your tanned rabbit furs when you're done tanning them? Do you wanna grab it? It's right just outside of camera. So here's an update on the rabbit tanning situation that we did. It turned out really good. We used a bottle of uh, tanning solution and my only complaint was that, I don't know, the tanning solution kind of gets on the fur and I don't necessarily know how to clean that off while keeping the hide like nice and supple. Cause I'm sure we could get this wet again and clean that out, but then I would have to stretch the hides again, but they preserved really well. Are you able to reach the goat skin too? So here's the goat skin. I haven't stretched this very much, but it's preserved. You can kind of see on the inside how nice and white it's getting. It's not super flexible cause I haven't done a lot with it, but it's preserved. It's absolutely preserved. So it's cool. So what am I making with these? Really my only goal with these furs right now was to learn how to tan them and figure out my favorite way. It's okay. 
and figure out my favorite way to tan them. So far that was a really easy way to do it. You do have to buy like an outside product in order to get it done the way that I did it. And so I, I will be trying other methods like brain tanning and all that. But really what I wanna do with these is really basic. What I'm gonna do is cut out. I think in order to get a pom-pom, you're supposed to cut a square. There's a way to turn a square into a sphere, but I'm just gonna turn them into little pom-poms like that for hats and things. I do crochet and knit, and that could be a fun thing for me to kind of work on throughout the summer if I have time. I may not, I very likely will not, but I'd like to maybe stock a few hats that I've knitted with some of the rabbit fur pom-poms the, on the website before winter really hits for next season. I think that would be really cool. Are you planning on butchering or raising any more goats for meat? You can answer that one. <laughs> Many. Yeah, we we don't plan to stop raising goats for meat. I don't know, when we cooked that goat strap and tasted that, you said something that really surprised me. Do you remember what you said that night? I was, I was floored. No. You said you almost preferred it over venison. Do you remember, remember saying I that? Remember that? I believe it, but I don't remember. <laughs> and I, I kind of agree. There's a very great butteriness to goat meat. It has an amazing flavor. Every time we've cooked it, I have had to season it very minimally to get an amazing flavor out of it. I don't ever want to be without it. Actually, there are going, there's quite a few goats that I'm simply not listing for sale because I want to be able to keep goats back for meat. So that includes both of Clover's boys. I'm playing around with the idea of using one of them um, before we butcher him in order to get a couple more standard does in our herd, basically because I didn't get anything out of Christine, so I don't have a replacement for her. I won't be breeding her again, but I could breed this baby to Elpis, I could breed this baby to Talia and get another standard doe in order to replace Christine. So I'm playing around with it, but ultimately both those boys are destined for the freezer, as is um, Christine's three-teated doe. She's going in the freezer and probably a few others. Breezy has not delivered yet. So we're filming this on Wednesday night. So far Breezy has not progressed towards labor, but I'm hoping she does by this weekend, for sure. But yes, we will always be raising goats for meat. It's, it's amazing meat if you've never tried it. What about pigs? Pigs, yes, we are going to do pigs again, but not this year. So recently, I guess it wasn't too recent, but this past fall, we butchered or had butchered three Cooney Cooney pigs, and they were really big. Some of our friends have Cooney Cooney pigs that are kind of tiny. Ours were huge. I don't know how that happened. So we have a lot of pork in the freezer right now, and what I would really like to do, and I don't know if I've talked about this much on the channel, but the pig pen that we have, I would like to rotate it every other year, make that a garden space, and then put pigs in it that next spring so the pigs can you know, rummage through what used to be a garden and you know, re-fertilize and amend that space so that I can butcher them in the fall and then the next year use it as a garden space again. So that's the plan. We'll have a couple pigs again for sure. They won't be Cooney Coonies because I want a faster growing pig, but that won't be until next year that we get some piglets. Could you ever be interested in writing a book about homesteading? Nope. <laughs> no, no. I think like maybe, I can't say never ever, but there's already enough on the plate. Um, we are getting our website revamped right now. If you go to sageandstonehomestead.com, there's a preview there. It's in a different language, so ignore that. That's just like filler text. But I am going to start blogging a little bit when I can. And that's maybe a baby step towards a book, but I kind of doubt it. Right now, it's just a place to kind of put down things that I already have videos on to sort of draw in audience that really would prefer to read things or be able to bookmark stuff and go back to it. So that's where that is right now. I can't picture myself writing a book. I don't think I have it in me. Not really. I barely know that I'll be able to, to hold the blog together. So we'll see. Would you ever consider starting a homesteading podcast? I know I'd love to listen to something like that, and a holistic and spiritual take on homesteading is something I haven't found. Now, I left that part of the question in here because I don't know if you have seen the Roots and Refuge podcast. She has exactly what you're looking for. Exactly what you're looking for, um, Roots and Refuge Farm. 
and I listen to her podcast every single week. She posts every Wednesday. Um, I have been on podcasts before and I'll probably be on podcasts in the future, but that's another thing that I don't necessarily plan on starting. However, I could see myself podcasting before I could ever see myself writing a book because I feel like I can sit here and talk forever. The about, transition is a lot easier yeah, from YouTube to podcast. I, yes, I think it is. I, I could see that happening well before writing a book, but I don't have plans for that at all in the future. I'll be on podcast though. So if you've got a podcast, let me know. <laughs> do your does ever get aggressive with each other and what do you do to correct it? Like when the one who got rammed into the wall right before having her kids. So it was Talia was in labor when Christine rammed her into a wall. And I saw it, we saw it on camera. I didn't see it, but some of my members who were watching the live stream at the time, they saw it. And to be honest, that particular instance was goats just being goats. Christine had just had her babies the week prior, the, her one baby the week prior, and she's very a very protective mother. Um, but that wasn't the most violent that goats can be by any means. Um, I didn't count that against her at all. I have had goats that were genuinely mean and they were sold. They were sold with clear and open communication to their new buyer that they should not be around small goats or kids and the fact that they were mean. I know one of them probably went into someone's freezer. The other one was fine with keeping goats that were a little bit mean because they didn't have any small goats. But this goat that I had, it was a La Mancha. She would take a Nigerian baby and pin him against the ground and spin around trying to drive him into the dirt. That is mean. That is horribly mean. Trying to actually cause harm. Goats are going to headbutt. They're going to be a little ornery. Sometimes they're going to nip at each other. I don't do a whole lot because that's just goats being goats. They have a hierarchy that they need to work out. And so essentially if a goat's going to be mean enough, I will sell them or put them in the freezer. And we did today just sell Barely to a friend. Barely was the one goat that I had left in the barn with horns. She could be kind of mean with those horns. She would, like goats normally headbutt, but she would angle her head enough to like specifically stab another goat, which is really dangerous when you've got nice soft udders all around. And so she went to a farm that doesn't have any other dairy goats. They are fine with dealing with her issues with having kids I have to help her have babies every single time they're fine with that and they're fine with her ornery attitude <laughs> so I wouldn't keep a mean goat at all I don't think there's much you can do to train them I wouldn't imagine so probably not every time without fail that I plant seeds I get mold on the tops of my pots it doesn't seem to matter what soil I use what am I doing wrong that's not a livestock question that's not I forgot that was in there so I had actually very superficially answered this question before. I think airflow is really important. A lot of people will sterilize their planting medium. I don't have the time or headspace for that. But if you do clean your planting pots in between different plantings, that does help stave off different bacteria and things and molds that could transfer into your new seed starting venture. But someone had mentioned underneath of this comment and I wanted to mention it out loud in case other people hadn't heard this suggestion because I hadn't heard of it before and it's genius. If you sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on the top of your soil that is supposed to help keep molds and things at bay and I think that's genius that would probably also help with pest pressure because that's one thing that we can have the second that I plant out new seeds it's like I think it's a rodent whatever it is it's smart because it goes right for the center of the planting pot and it just digs out the seed and eats it irritating but you know cinnamon is supposed to be a deterrent so it might it might help I want to get goats for milk and cheese and meat next year. Thinking about Nubians because we had them growing up and they're the cutest goat in my opinion. And boars to cross them, to cross them with. What do you think? We're a family of six. I'm thinking we'll want to start with three does and two bucks. That sounds awesome. I have heard very great things about crossing a meat breed with a dairy breed. And actually Nubians are one of the more meaty dairy breeds. And so I think that's a very good idea. I would probably have obviously the Nubian does and then the boar bucks. I think that's a solid plan. I love it. I think you should do it. I'm, I'm a huge enabler though. I'm just like, yes, all the goats all the time. <laughs> For many goat breeds, do they generally follow a Nigerian dwarf breeding cycle or a standard breeding cycle? 
So we keep La Manchas and Nigerians here and we have started breeding towards mini La Manchas. That's when you cross the Nigerian dwarf with the standard La Mancha and you get what's, a, what's called a mini. And it's kind of hit or miss whether or not, whether they're going to be more like a Nigerian with their gestation and breeding cycles or more like a La Mancha. So I have friends who have been raising minis for a long time and they say that their mini La Manchas cycle more like a standard. And I do have people in the comment section though telling me all the time, hey, my mini, you know, is polyesterous like a Nigerian. And so it I kind of could go either way. I haven't noticed that my minis, my F1 minis that I have in the barn right now, I've noticed them cycle in the fall. I've never noticed them cycle outside of fall, but they were quite small this last season. Um, they're now all one year old. So I might notice more as we go into the into the summer them cycling but so far it kind of looks like my minis are cycling more like a standard at what age should i retire a doe and i'm assuming this person means a doe goat but in case you mean a doe rabbit the rabbits usually it's around age four they you'll know because they start kind of slowing down their litter sizes might get smaller or they may really not take care of their litters towards the end. They might have a hard time conceiving. You'll know, you'll know it's time to retire a rabbit. With a goat, it's better if you don't wait for issues to start. The main cause of death for a dairy doe is like childbirth related, it's kidding related when she gets a little bit older. And so we retired Christina age nine, but there were signs leading up to it that kind of made me realize we were headed in that direction. She's been only having one baby, each kidding, and so her body's worn out, and there's a couple reasons for that. I, when I bought her, she was very sick and mineral deficient and, and yada, 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 but around nine or 10, I think, is a normal age for really starting to consider retirement of the doe, especially if she's been having like trouble actually delivering when it seems like she shouldn't have any problems pushing like you know the baby's in the perfect position and she's still struggling real hard to get the baby out or she has problems recovering i didn't talk about it very much on the channel but the membership knew that christine had a really hard time recovering after this last baby so it was a very great confirmation that we need to stop breeding her um, i was really scared that she was gonna die she was not eating and she was not laying down i thought she was in horrible pain which did not make sense because she gave birth to this baby just fine everything went really well but her recovery was really slow she took a while to really bounce back and i didn't like that so for sure won't be breeding her again she's nine why do you throw away feed bags and baling twine you can make so many useful things i know you can and i so wish there were more hours in the day because i want to do all the things so recently someone commented on a video like oh no why are you cut cutting the baling twine not next to a knot so around the bales of hay or straw the twine is knotted together and if you cut next to the knot you get a longer length of the cord to do something with that doesn't have like a broken segment i knew that's where this person was going with it and i said it's because i throw it away i know you can do stuff with it but i personally don't because i don't have the time um i think i could get interested in doing uh projects like that and they said that it makes really great welcome mats which is so cool makes sense yeah it does make sense and that's something i could see myself doing over like the winter season but we're not headed into a season where i think i'm gonna have the time for that and you can make out of the feed bags people will make like reusable grocery bags i've seen that we go through a lot of feed it could be eight eight to nine bags of feed every single week so i could get a lot of grocery bags out of it but again it takes time to make those things and this is what I do with my spare time. I make content. So you kind of have to pick and choose and we do choose to throw those things away. Do you regret selling seven milkers ahead of having a buck year this kidding season? Nope, I think some people think, oh no, Heather, you just sold all those does. Like I mentioned, I sold barely today. So that does make seven. I sold Pesky and Pepper, Mayhem, Holly, Tallulah, Boba, and Barely. That was seven that I used to have in the barn that I do not anymore. And our only keepers this year 
is Winnie and Alara. That is it. That's all I have for keepers this year. So I'm still five goats down, but that makes me really excited because the only mini La Mancha that I had born last year that was old enough to breed that fall was Breezy. Breezy was 80 pounds and I was comfortable breeding her. We're still waiting on her to give birth. The other four were just not big enough. Um, three of them were triplets and then we had Tori. Tori was also a triplet and they just didn't get to the size that I was comfortable breeding them. And so this coming fall, as long as Tori gets big enough, Tori's still itty bitty, she's like 42 pounds. As long as they get big enough, I'll breed them. And that means that I have that many more spots open to keep goats back from those animals. Because if I had a bunch of goats that I kept back this year, and then I knew next year we were gonna have more goats born out of all of those does, it would be really hard to figure out what to do. But looks like I don't have to really think about it because the slots are just automatically open. So I'm excited for the growth of our herd, even if it takes an extra year longer. And the other question I did not write down, so speaking of the minis, the mini La Manchas, um, I had someone ask me how long does it take to get to purebred status? So when you breed a La Mancha with a Nigerian dwarf, that first cross is an F1 hybrid animal. And it's not technically purebred. Those genes are unstable. It takes generations for those genes to really be solid in the fact that they will reproduce something of those same genetics over and over and over. The thing with F1s is their genetics can just be kind of wild. You can breed an F1 with an F1 and get something that looks more like a Nigerian or something that looks more like a La Mancha. And as you breed on, those things just get a lot more predictable. And with mini, mini goats, it's F6. That's purebred status is F6. So she was asking how long does it take to get to F6? Technically, what is it? Six years would be all it would take six or seven years because you breed the first year you gotta mm -hmm. wait for them to kid you could take that little amount of time if you started with f0 so the standard breeds it's going to take longer than that to do it right in my opinion because there's going to be some things that don't work out and i don't just want an f6 animal to get an f6 animal i need an f6 animal that is healthy and is of really great quality. I'm not going to sacrifice other quality or health just to get that F6. That's not, that's not the goal. So it's gonna take some time. It might take 15 years for me to get the, the F6 and I'm not even joking, he's laughing. I mean, it might, it could, I could see how it could take that long to get the animal that I'm really looking for. As an example too, when you breed, let's say I had an F1 and I, I'm, buy, I'm hopefully buying this month an F4 buck. When I breed the F4 buck back to an F1, you're only going to get a generation higher than the lowest generation of the pairing. So with the doe, in theory, being the F1 and the buck being the F4, I'm only gonna get an F2 out of that. You don't just automatically jump. You can't like skip generations. It doesn't work like that. So it's, t it's some time, but it's worth the work. There's a lot that I look forward to in the whole process. If you have more questions, go ahead and put them down below. If you are still with us, you may or may not know that at the end of all of our Q and A's, I like to give something away. So you've been seeing me drink my evening coffee here. This is my favorite coffee mug in the whole world and it has our logo on it. So this specific colorway, I, got, I just got one of, this is mine, but we did order quite a few of this colorway. So here is our branded favorite logo mug that I want to give one away today. I think there's eight more left in the shed. I have sold some already. Our membership was able to buy some. If you want to buy a mug, right now our website is not, it's under construction until May. If you really want one, email me and I can like bill you through PayPal and we can do it that way. My email is sageandstonehomestead at gmail.com. But if you wanna to try to win one, we're gonna be giving one away today. So what we're gonna do is have anybody who wants to enter to win a mug, I don't care where you're at in the world, I will send it. I have sent a few things across the pond as they say. But just let me know how you discovered our channel and we will select from those comments our winner in one week. So today is Friday that this is gonna go live. 
next Friday. I will go live and we will select our winner. Now, just in case a troll comes on here, if someone comments that you won and it looks like me, don't trust that that is me. It may not be. There are troll accounts that have come on our giveaways before that have made an account that looks like me. If you click the image and it has an account that has all of my videos on it with almost 30,000 subscribers, that's probably me. But just in case, you can email me, sageandstonehomestead at gmail.com and verify. I'm not gonna need anything except for your address. I need no payment information from anything whatsoever. And so please try not to get scammed. <laughs> so I'll give you this plus a Beulah ground coffee. I think this is the Guatemalan, yes. And let me know how you discovered us. It's one of my favorite questions to ask because it's such a wide variety of answers that we get. It just was not, it wasn't a lot that you could answer, you're no. right. I'm sorry. I don't mind not talking. <laughs> I know, that's kind of how he is, that's fine. When they say opposites attract, mm -hmm. facts. So guys, we're gonna get to bed. I am exhausted. Yeah. Oh, I have to go check on Breezy. Stay watch of the channel, especially the community tab. That's where I will give you guys the first update on Breezy. The second she goes into labor, you're gonna know there. And I have to feed my babies. Oh man. Oh no. Winnie and Winnie's brother. Winnie and Pooh. Oh, that's cute. It's not Pooh though. It's <laughs> we have been, sorry, planting uh, late, late just, oh yeah, go ahead. Do you regret selling no. Seven. Oh, okay. Maybe. Not that. Four plus two to eight because they haven't been, um, what do you call it? I, I don't want to say the genes are unstable because they've been, they're not, they haven't been stabilized. That's redundant. I don't know. <laughs> Is the, hold on. I need an F6 and I don't care where you at in the world. Hold on. That was it. That no. was fast. What does it say? 20 27. I'm going to have no editing in this at all. It's going to be great. We've gotten really efficient at these. Holy cow. Please say the sound was working. Yes, it was.